golf rounds were off about 35 or 40 percent and by the end of the year I believe December they were up about 35 percent for the full year it was up double digits if I'm remembering correctly about 15 percent as we entered this year we've kind of seen that behavior stay well like we haven't entered the really busy period that we kind of once courses started opening again but we think the first half of the year we're going to see a lot of growth rounds are going to be up and rounds the second half of the year if the weather's good could be flat with last year which would actually be fantastic for our business that means our business is going to continue to grow because the e-commerce changes the kind of the shift from buying in a store to buying online golf behavior may go back to doing other sports and other things i think the shift to e-commerce which certainly benefits us is a permanent change golf smarter number 790 the business of covid golf where the industry has been and where it's going with tom cox of golfballs.com this is golf smarter sharing stories tips and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf iq here's your host fred green welcome to the golf smarter podcast tom great to be here fred Great to have you on. Um, you're one of those interesting characters that I like to bring on the show every so often and more often than I hope because you have a different perspective of the golf world. You come to it uh, from the industry side, not the green grass side. I'm a particularly mediocre golfer. Uh, I love you already. But, but I've been in the golf business for, for over 30 years. I actually started in, uh, in golf course management uh, at a country club but not in the golf, not in the pro shop side, kind of in the administrative side, which is, which is why I still carry a 15 handicap. And I'm <laughs> like, I was never a cart guy that had time to hit balls at the range. I was never a range, a range guy that got to, that, that worked on my wedge game in order to, you know, knock balls around. I, I was, I've always been focused on the business of golf. You know, people come to me frequently and it's like, oh, you know, whether it was when I was working around baseball or other sports or this, it's like, oh, I just love this sport. I want to get into it. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, those are two different things. Do you love the sport as a fan or do you love the business of that sport? And if you love it as a fan, then just stay a fan or it's going to ruin it for you forever. Yeah, you, you make a great point. Bakers don't always uh, want to run a bakery. Right. They, they, they like to bake and they like to eat what they bake, but they may not want to uh, to run a business. And how many shrinks have you ever met that have kids that are completely screwed up? Good point. <laughs> so um, golfballs.com, if anybody has ever opened an email, their email account, they have seen emails from golfballs.com. You guys are prolific, to say the least, um, in in getting the word out there on what you provide to all golf consumers. Yeah. Well, go golf is, as you know, is an affinity group and, and people, uh, golfers like to get information and they like to get deals about golf. We've been at it a long time and, and we have, we've serviced, uh, you know, over the, over the 25 years we've been in business, uh, millions and millions of golfers, uh, throughout, throughout the, throughout the United States. And so, uh, you know, if uh, go golfers typically enjoy getting uh, getting communication via email uh, on 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 the sport that they love. Right. And speaking of prolific, you, you perhaps could be the most prolific golf podcaster uh, uh, out there, period. Uh, end of story as well. Oh, thank you. That's it, it's possible. <laughs> I don't know. You know, if you say it enough. Like we say, we're the world leader in golf customization. Well, we've been doing it for over 20 years, almost 25 years. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so if, if you say it enough, maybe it's true. So you have the longest running golf podcast. And as far as I'm concerned, the longest running golf podcast uh, in golf. Thank you. That's very kind of you, but that's not why we're here. But if you want to talk about me for the rest of the hour, sure. then that would be great, but let's not do that. Okay. Um, so it's, it's interesting because golf, uh, your side of the golf business, golf customization, um, corporate media, corporate, corporate events, um, critically important. And they're always, when they're doing charity events, when they're doing, you know, corporate outings, 
the main point that they're there is to get their name out. You, you bet. So, so if you looked at our business at a high level, uh, two thirds of what, two thirds of what we sell is consumer direct to consumer golfers like you and your weekend foursome, uh, uh, buying directly from us about one third of our business is corporate. We call it our corporate and event business. Cause I'd say a little bit, you know, greater than half of our corporate business is, or it's, it's, uh, businesses buying for a golf tournament. And so, uh, so we, we like to make it really easy, uh, not just to sell, sell, uh, businesses or tournaments, golf balls, but kind of everything you need to fill a ditty bag at a, at, at a, at a golf tournament. Uh, it, it, it turns out it's, it's easy to make mistakes in that, in that, uh, that part of the business. And so, so it's really important to get, to get, to get somebody's logo or their event logo or their business logo, right, right. The first time, uh, and get it on time. Otherwise you could miss an event. So it's, it's, uh, we, we've been, we've been at that, that segment of our business. We've been in for a little bit over 20 years as well. Congratulations. But that's not how this company started. No, no, we started, uh, we, we started in the ponds, uh, in, in, uh, in 95, uh, I was a club manager, uh, and, uh, one week it just, uh, it was very serendipitous. I, I was, I had a passion for computers. Computers were my hobby. Uh, and, uh, and then the internet came along and I, and I said in like the, in the early nineties, wow, I need to learn a lot about this. This is going to be, mm. this is going to be something. I didn't quite know, know where to marry that up to a business. I don't know that anybody did in like 93 or 94, unless you were AOL, uh, and, and you were, you were some kind of a service provider. And then, uh, in the second half of 95, during the same week, uh, 1995, during the same week, I had a meeting with a web developer to build a website for a country club. We did a lot of wedding receptions, very picturesque club. And, uh, and so you kind of, you wanted to build a website with a bunch of photos that people could see to help them book a function. And then, uh, later on that week, I had a meeting with, uh, with the, with the dive, a diving company that dove, dove in our lakes to pull the balls out. And, and I had this, this idea to, uh, to work with the web developer to build a website and work with the divers to do, uh, to actually do fulfillment on orders. And so the original plan was just to be a marketing company and you'd let the guys that dive in the lakes do the fulfillment on the orders. And that was kind of the original idea uh, of used golf ball orders. That was the original idea behind, behind golfballs.com. We quickly learned that, uh, that, well, stand, turnaround times weren't really important in, in early in 95 and 96. If it got there it, at all, uh, you were, you were doing pretty good, but we learned as, as the buying standards improved, uh, we, we needed to bring all of the fulfillment in house because, because ultimately, ultimately a differentiator in business is service. I was from in the club management business. And so service was very important to me. We kind of took, took the fulfillment out of the hands of the divers, which by the way, they do a great job pulling the balls out of the, out of the lakes, but it's not a real priority to take your package, sort it, grade it, package it up and ship it out in a, in a timely manner. So we brought that in house, uh, and we, we started, we became a, a pretty large used golf ball processor. Uh, and it, and, and, uh, and that was really our business for the first two or three years. So if you look at, look at what we did from 95, 96 and 97, uh, it was, it was almost exclusively, uh, in, in the used golf ball business. Um, in 98, we, uh, we, we started transitioning to new products and even, even customized products. So we, we bought a printer, some printing equipment. We, we started making logoed products available for sale on our website. And, uh, and in, a, in around 99, 2000 is when we started doing, uh, selling personalized, you know, personalized golf balls online to, direct to consumer and doing, doing printing on that as well. Um, it's an interesting story. What, why we got out of the, uh, out of the used ball business the, the, in 95, building a website, building an e-commerce website was a really big deal. We had yeah. to have software developers. We had to have our own people do it. By the time 1998 got got here, eBay was was uh, in in full swing, and and the dudes that we were buying the balls from for, for the used balls from were taking their best balls, 
and, and selling them on eBay and selling us the worst balls, uh, the, the ball. And so, so we kind of saw the handwriting on the wall and said, let, if, let, let's pivot the company. Let's stop focusing on, on, on this part, on that part of the business and let's focus on new and customized products. So we kind of felt like customization was, was going to be a premium buyer uh, and that we were very early on in the game to, to, offer, to offer personalized and customized products. And it was really in the, in the, in the 2000 timeframe that we, that we pivoted the business to, to kind of full, full blown customs, customization. And when I say customization, I mean, not, it's not just balls. It, it's mostly balls, but it's, it's, towels, it's shirts, it's golf bags, it's, it's, you, you can't imagine how many divot tools we personalize in a, in a day. Uh, it's, it's, it's all, it's all of that. So if you kind of, you know, you've got kind of the beginning there, if you fast forward it to today, uh, we have about 120 permanent employees. This time of year, we're very busy. We've got probably around 150 or 160 we could probably use 20 more right now but it's 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 hard to it's hard to get get people on board right now and we print about uh four to five thousand dozen golf balls a day that's that's a that's kind of about where we are uh in terms of um in terms of balls and, and products printed we're probably shipping between a thousand and fifteen hundred packages a day or so and uh, and so that that that's the short that's the short version of, of how we how we got from from there to here. <laughs> well, you know, I think a testimony to how you've been able to uh, listen to what your customers are demanding, seeing what's coming up, uh, is the fact that you're in this cavernous room right now, and it sounds like you're in the back of it um, because this is a large conference room that is your personal office. That's very impressive. Well, the this we used to have a lot of meetings in this room, and uh, and since COVID, that was uh, yeah. Our meetings are like this podcast. <laughs> we're we're, <laughs> uh, we're we're meeting we're meeting over uh, over a computer. You make a really good point though. Uh, we we have always been led by our customers to new and new and better and different iterations of the business. And and I'll, I'll give you give you a good example of that is a product line we created a few years ago called uh, ID Align, which is basically an, an, align, uh, an alignment aid with initials inside of it. And so mm -hmm. one of my board members, uh, you know, if, if, if a customer calls in and says, can you do this? If we can do it, we try to do it. One of, one of my good friends and a board member said, hey, can you put MM, his initials are MM, in, inside of a line um, and, and, and printed all the golf balls that I, that I buy from you. We said, yeah, yeah, I think we can do that. And it's one thing to do a one up and it's entirely different to be able to do it at scale, but we figured out a way to do, to, to do it at scale. And we mm -hmm. kind of created the, uh, a product line that we called, that we call, uh, idea line, uh, more recently. Uh, and this is, I would say if, 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 you know, if, if a golf e-commerce business can have a killer app. This is our killer app. It's called the Line XL, and that is uh, that's a line printed halfway around the ball, but you can print your name inside of the uh, inside of the line. It's it's pretty cool. So if you watch yeah. tournament golf, which everybody listening to this to this podcast absolutely watches tournament golf, about half the guys have you use a they use a sharpie and they and they smudge a line halfway around the ball. And, uh, and, and as we know, since we've probably done it ourselves, it smears, it comes off. It's not, well, we, we, we invented some equipment to be able to print that at scale, uh, consistently nearly perfect every time and put a name in it inside of it. And so kind of that same tour proven, you know, tour validated line halfway around the ball is, is a product line we, we, we launched a couple of years ago that has become our fastest growing the fastest growing customization that we that we have by far uh, in company history because because the pros are doing it right. But yeah. what what we're able to do that the pros don't you can't really do with the sharpie is is you order it with the line halfway around the ball whatever color you want which you could do with the sharpie. But then we'll we'll put your name or a message or even a company name inside of that line and it it, it's, it look it looks pretty cool. It sounds. Uh, 
it, it sounds small, but if you're if if you're an avid golfer and you like that line around the ball, you like a line XL a lot a lot a lot better than your sharp. It's a much better experience than the sharpie for sure. Awesome. And at first, I I understand you're saying ID align, correct? Because I thought you were saying yeah, it's, idea. It's two. I different thought you were saying yeah, idea line. line. I, I identification ID dash uh-huh. line. Is yeah. was the first was the first product line that we created with initials and a shorter line, and then and then kind of kind of to adapt to to the cha- a change in the market, which is the line halfway around the ball. Uh, we just created an XL version of of that product, a line XL. Anyway, I know there it's it might be a little confusing. We we try to do a really good job on the website of illustrating the differences. But between between the product lines, very visually, uh, so 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 there's no confusion. But but for sure, uh, golfers like alignment aids printed on their golf ball. Absolutely, golf ball. I I've, I've been using for years. I've been using the uh, Check Go Pro, which spins the ball and allows me to put the line on it. But I like I've the got, idea I've of putting. A, I've got a Check Go at my house. In fact, we actually thought about. Uh, now, it doesn't look very pretty, right? Like it doesn't have to look pretty. But, no. but, you know, you know, you, but, and so we, we've actually thought about using a bunch of them to, to spin up golf balls and perfectly put that line. It just aesthetically, it's not that great. And you have to really want, like, you have to understand, I'm afraid if we sold it with kind of the check go line on it and it's yeah. like marked off, marked across a brand logo or something like that. I don't know if that would be a great, that wouldn't be a great customer experience for some. I'm just afraid like if it's on television, (laughs) well, if it's on television or, or, uh, if, if it's sometimes it's difficult to manage expectations online. And so Mm -hmm. if what you deliver is nice, clear, clean and crisp, kind of the check go look is, is arguably better balanced, right? Like that's that's the whole point of, of the check go, but, but you end up with a line like slicing your brand logo, down, 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 absolutely. Down. It it is where it is where wherever it is, and so we kind of opted we kind of opted not to not to go down that path. But uh, I I wouldn't mind giving it a try as long as like we're we're a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it, return it, or if you don't like it, we'll we'll fix it. I'm just afraid with the check go, like yeah, somebody gonna look at that and they're gonna go, mm, I think I want to send that back. Yeah, because it looks off kilter, right? It doesn't look necessarily it because it is when, balanced but it doesn't it aesthetically it doesn't look ba- as bad it doesn't look balanced right because the 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 main logos are generally just randomly printed on a ball they're right. not trying to find the the right. cent- centrifugal center of the ball yeah. and, and um, arguably there is there is a very small difference between you know yeah yeah right. but that's in your head just like golf it's all I in know, your head I but i do i do like the idea of a reminder on the ball that just says golf smarter Golf smarter. You know, I'm gonna write. I think I'm gonna write that down. That's that, that, that is a great brand position. That's a great brand position. Golf. Well, that's that was kind of a lucky guess that I had when I came up with the name for this show. So, I was actually reading a book, um, and uh, uh, Jones, the the book on architecture, and he, he just I just saw the words golf smarter because i was i had a different idea called t tour which was a video on how to play hole by hole how to play a course and golf smarter just kind of came out of that and i was like yeah i'll just name the podcast that because i'm not sure what i'm doing because this was this was the podcast i started this two years before the iphone came out right yeah so podcasting was really months old at that point when i started doing these conversations but yeah. uh yeah so golf smarter to me is not just the name of the show it's how we play. Yep. And that's why it, I believe it validates the longest running uh, golf <laughs> podcast uh, in, no. the, in, the, in, the no, in the no universe. Tom, Tom, it's just an obsession that I can't let go of. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with audience, has nothing to do with anything else. But it's like, I really like doing This is a passion project for me. Yeah. I really oh. enjoy doing this. It, I've learned awesome. a ton. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Let's take time out. We'll be back right after this. Tom, I'm curious when you travel, 
and you're on an airplane and you get into that random conversation with somebody, do you tell them what you do? Boy, that, that's a, that's a good question. Um, if I, I had a friend, I had a friend who was a baseball executive and he didn't like talking to people on the plane. And he like, once you say, Oh yeah, I, I'm vice president of a baseball team. They're like, they'll talk to him for hours trying to get free tickets. And so he's like, and he said, I sell insurance. Boom. End of conversation. <laughs> you know, if, the, if the person is conversational, uh, that, that, Typically, if someone is uh, looks like they want to be left alone, I will absolutely leave them alone. I will. They 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 won't they won't hear from me. Uh, if they seem to, typically, if they're a golfer, uh, at some point along the ride, they're going to talk about golf. And if they if they talk about golf, I'll talk about golf with them. And I'll talk about. I mean, I may not talk about the business, but I'll but I'll but I'll talk about golf. And if if it seemed like it, it seems silly to say this, but but a large number of people that I that I have met that are that are golfers have bought golf balls from golfballs.com before. Like it's it's That's amazing. Awesome. It, it's it's a wonderful experience if I can meet, you know, run in randomly run into somebody and they and they tell me, yeah, I've been a customer of yours for for ten years. I go, wow, like I I I, I think that's pretty cool. And so that that can leads, I buy you a drink? Yeah, that, that leads us down a really you know a, a, a really neat humbling conversation because because it's just neat to be able to find people the first thing i ask is how was your experience with us and if they bought from us 10 times it's it's been pretty good right like the first thing, thank you for your business and and uh how was your how was your experience and then we just kind of talk about talk about golf stuff so what kind of great stories have you heard on the golf course or that you have personal experiences from being on the golf course since like i can't believe that happened or just craziness I just love um, these kind of stories. I, I, I unfortunately don't play nearly as much golf. Like late with with a with a three year old lately, I haven't uh, <laughs> I, I haven't been able to play a whole lot of golf. But now yeah. I'm configuring my backyard to be able to uh, play golf in my backyard because it turns out if you have a three year old, you can do whatever you want in your backyard, uh, right? E- even even play golf. Uh, with that. Little boy or little girl? Uh, a little boy named Thomas. Uh, he's very he's very active. Uh, he he doesn't he doesn't take my instruction very well. He takes other people's instruction extremely well. <laughs> Welcome to father. We learned that with soccer. We learned that with swimming. Uh, and uh, and so uh, he needs a golf instructor. So far, all of the instructors have worked very well. Except, except, except mom and dad, and that and, and that hasn't worked out so well. Well, I know that my my older son, his one of his first words was ball, 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 ball. Was was Thomas's first word personalized ball, personalized ball. Uh, I, I can assure you, one of his first toys was a golf ball. Oh yeah, <laughs> with his name on it, and, and he and he tried to chew it, uh, but then but then when his mouth got big enough to fit the golf ball in it, we took, you know, took it away. And we, we didn't really do that, but he did. He has, he has been around golf balls his whole life, as you, as you might imagine. He's had a set of golf clubs for a year and a half, but there's not much that a one and a half year old would do with a set of golf clubs. And we're, we're approaching the point in time at which uh, he can really get instruction. And so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think that, that, that'll be great if I can get him into the game. I hear that you have to not let him play and get him to ride along in order for him to want to play. I know there, there's a lot of different schools of thought on, on how, on how you get, you know, how, how you, 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 uh, get a kid into the game, into the sport. But, uh, I have one of my friends that, that followed that approach and it worked like a charm. Another one said, give him, give him popcorn and, and give him a club when he wants to hit, hit when you're, you know, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out along the way, I suppose. Well, I'll tell you, I, as you can imagine, I've done multiple episodes on how do I get my kids started in the game. Uh, if there's a topic I may have covered, I think I've covered it. And, uh, and, and if I can share with you some of the advice that get them hooked on putting, because first of all, it's easy to, you know, to, to conceptualize what's going on with putting. And if they get good at putting, then the rest of the game is going to be 
a breeze, right? And here's, here's the greatest tip that I've ever heard about getting a kid involved in putting. And that is put a ball next to the hole and then have him roll a ball into that ball and see it drop. Because when you're looking at a hole in the ground, it's hard to conceptualize a ball falling in, getting a ball to fall in. But when you're aiming at something and then have it drop in, then it's like, oh, okay, now I get it. That's kind of why I like seeing the pin stay in the hole when we're putting. It gives me a target to go at, right, instead of this circle, this hole in the ground. Yeah, that's some, that's some great advice. Uh, we, we just got the hitting mat for the backyard. Mm-hmm. We'll soon mm-hmm. get the putting green for the backyard. And when we do that, we'll be, we'll be set. Yeah. I've got a putting green in my backyard and little kids that when, when, when friends come over, they just like to have one of those long tubes that holds a bunch of balls and let the balls fall out. And then they refill the, the tube back in, <laughs> but just rolling the ball around, getting that feel. Yeah, but the that, thing that, that we have to that's teach a great them, suggestion. That's a great suggestion. And and what we like to remind the three year olds is, and we don't le- we don't want them to have full swings at this point because that could be really dangerous. So it's like the club head, you know, it doesn't go above your knees. You got to keep it down low. Try not to swing hard because you're going to hurt someone and probably hurt yourself at some point. So yeah. putting is just a, such a great way to get little ones started in the game. Fantastic idea. I I was going about it the wrong way. He was. He had his little, uh, I don't know what it was, a pitch and wedge looking iron. Uh, and I, yeah, yeah, he's, it's, he, yeah, he's a year absolutely. away from doing something with that, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> unless, you know, Tiger, you can go through the right. Tiger thing, but then look what happens. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, that's, that, that's <laughs> but I've got, listen, if you like that stuff, I've got a podcast for you to listen to. <laughs> I, I, I totally will. I may have to go back 10 years or 12 years or 14 years, but but I'll do that. Then let me introduce you to Golf Smarter Mulligans. As a matter of fact, let's take a time out right now and hear what's on the Golf Smarter Mulligans this week. This is the last week we'll be featuring Tony Manzoni on Golf Smarter Mulligans for 2021. Uh, Based on the year-to-year reaction, I can pretty much promise you that we'll do it again next year and hopefully bring back some episodes that weren't featured this year since we did, I think, 13 episodes together And we've only featured, what, nine over the last few months. This week, Tony employs his years of experience and what he's learned from his amazing contacts to teach us like no other. Lee Trevino once was talking about playing with Nicholas and how far Nicholas hit compared to everybody else. And he says, so when I played with Nicholas, I would try to hit the ball 230 yards off the tee. And when I did that, I hit it about 270. But when I tried to hit a 270, I hit a 230. That's just such great wisdom because that's so much the truth. How many times have we got up on a par five and it's a long one, so we're going to give it that extra, and we throw it from the top and we get a little steep with it, we pop it straight up in the air like a wedge, or we hit it way right or way left. There's a speed that you have to get used to with the driver, and a lot of it has to do with defocusing on any thought of hitting and swinging from point A to point B in a rhythm that you can keep your balance. And if you do that with the driver, you're going to keep the ball in play most of the time. That's Tony Manzoni on episode 106 of Golf Smarter Mulligans being released this Friday. Even though this is the last time you'll hear from Tony this year, we still have the most extensive information about him on our website at golfsmarter.com slash Tony. His book, The Lost Fundamental, One Simple Move, Better Golf Forever is available on Amazon. And his DVD of the same name can only be seen online through our private channel. To gain access, please write to me directly by clicking on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com. Both Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Please follow both so that you can get a brand new episode of either when it downloads to your favorite listening device. Tom, what kind of opportunities has this company allowed for you that, or privileges that have allowed for you that probably wouldn't have happened if you were still managing courses? Whoa, that's a... Uh... There's a lot of different angles on this one. So uh, I was in club management um, actually in the 80s, in the late 80s, 
and early 90s and kind of saw saw the boom and then the whole industry uh as as you probably know uh in particular golf courses were overbuilt and so uh so it's been a it's been a tough space to be uh for for a very long time so i would say making the transition from club management to golf e-commerce entrepreneur was a pretty good timely timely move for me uh and not that i didn't love club management it's just that the industry the industry kind of flatlined uh for 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 a while now it's in it's in a great it's in a great uptick right now um i i think for me uh it has allowed me number one is probably people it's it's enabled me to to both work with uh i've got an incredible board of directors uh, that I work with, they're, they they love golf. They're accomplished entrepreneurs on their own. We've got an incredible staff here at GolfBalls.com. Many of them have been here 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, so some of my senior leadership has been here has been here uh, for that long, and that's just that's kind of, kind of the kind of the business business piece. And then, as you know, if you're in the golf business, it's just a fun business. Like like once a quarter, we'll take a, I'll, we'll take a trip to go see a manufacturer. Let, let's, let's kind of take COVID out of the picture here. But, but before COVID, about once a quarter, we would, we would either go, go on a trip with, with manufacturers or go to a special tournament somewhere uh, and, and have, a, have just an incredible experience at a, uh, you know, FedEx St. Jude Classic or uh, we're actually playing now that pro ams are back in. I've got a board of directors meeting next week, and we're playing in the Zurich Pro Am in New Orleans next week. Like, what's wow. what's not what's not great about that? And so, it I think this business has enabled me to kind of weave weave my passion, like two passions, I would say, entrepreneurship and golf together, uh, and, and and then we kind of pull these things together. And, and mix in some incredible uh, life experiences with that, right? Like, who doesn't want to pay, play in a PGA Tour, uh, PGA Tour Pro Am, or who doesn't want to go to go to the Masters, right? Like, it's it, the, I, I'm, I've been fortunate to be able to to go to many, not this year, uh, but I've been fortunate to go to go to many Masters events, and these things are, you know, when when I have an opportunity to go to these events. They're each incredibly special in their own right. But I'd say it all comes, for me, it all comes down to people and relationships and just having an opportunity to, to interact and work with, work with fantastic people. It's interesting because when I wrote that question down here to, to discuss with you, my question I wrote right after, have you ever played at Augusta? Uh, I haven't, uh, yeah. I, but I had an almost invite uh, a year and a half ago, a friend of mine was invited and he didn't know if it was for one or for two, uh, until, until the day before. And I was going to be two, but it yeah. turned out it was for one. So, oh. you know, thanks Morris. It, I was so close. I was so close. It turned out to be rainy and the weather was terrible, but it didn't matter. It was, no. you just, you just, if you're invited, you play and you play and you, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's like the story. You don't tell people about the time you had uh, a shot on a par three that landed three inches from the hole. You know, it's like no. I almost had a hole in one. Yeah. No, you either did or you didn't, right? It's yeah. May, maybe you know, sometime in the next in the next five years or so, I'll get a chance to play play Augusta. That would be a great experience. Can I be your number two? Yeah. <laughs> Just in case, <laughs> you could be number one and let me be your number two. Oh no 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 no! My corporate executive son is a lot closer than I am than he, than he, than uh, of of getting the chance to play there. He even asked me last week, "What are the chances you think of me playing Augusta?" I said zero, and he goes, "Really? Okay, okay, I'll give you one percent chance." But he gets invited to play. You know, he, re, commercial real estate. He gets to play everywhere. Of um, so. So, so it's been a fascinating, you talked about the uptick in, yeah. in the industry um, that we've had uh, from 2020 and so many people going out, but now with people getting vaccines and, and it seems like we're getting close to being, well, it'll never be what it was. This will always be part of our lives. Um, but 
where do you see the state of the industry uh, in the next 18 months? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kind of back up a little bit and walk you through. We, we typically grow uh, 10 to 15% a year. That's kind of our normal cadence of, uh, of growth. Uh, from, you know, we grew a little bit more in the early years of the company, but we're normally in the 10 to 15 or 10 to 20% growth range. We entered uh, pre-COVID last year in that, you know, in that same, in that same growth, growth range. Then COVID hit, golf courses closed, and it was it was like a thirty day uh, it was thirty days of shock. Everybody went through it. Like it's not it's not unique to us. Everybody went through it. And then something interesting happened after about thirty days. Uh, the golf courses started opening, uh, and, and very quickly, and tournament golf started up on TV again, and and a wave of people that that that. Uh, couldn't do it really couldn't do any much else decided that they that they wanted to get on the get out on the golf course simultaneous with that a lot of the stores were still closed golf courses were open and stores were still closed so our business took a nosedive and then and then very quickly just just shot up like a rocket our biggest problem uh the biggest challenges that we had we we were it, it was difficult to well we we always do our best to manage employee safety but we we had some restriction restrictions on us where we could have we could only have eight people in the building at one at the same at the same point in time and we're trying to get get orders out of the building with printing and shipping and eight with with eight, eight people at a time mm. so, so so if you get like last april uh, golf rounds were off i believe about 35 or 40 percent on a year over year basis and by the end of the year uh, I believe December they were up about 35 percent for the full year. I believe it was up double digits. If I'm thinking, if I, if I'm remembering correctly, about 15 percent. As we entered this year, we've kind of seen that behavior stay. Well, like we've seen, we haven't entered kind of the kind of the the the, the really busy period that, that we kind of once cor- courses started opening again or about mm-hmm. enter that enter that period. But but we we think. Uh, the first half of the year, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot of growth, uh, rounds, rounds are going to be up and, and rounds the second half of the year, uh, will prop, you know, again, it's prognostication, right? Probably if, if, if the weather's good in the second half of the year rounds, uh, rounds could be flat with, with, uh, with, with last year, which would actually be fantastic for our business. That means our business is going to continue to grow because, uh, the e-commerce changes, the kind of the shift from buying in a store to buying online, uh, that the, the golf behavior may may change, may go back to doing other sports and other things. I think the e-commerce, the shift shift to e-commerce, which which certainly benefits us, is a permanent change. I think we picked up a few years of, of e-commerce growth during the pandemic, and I don't think I don't think that that's going to go back. So so I no, I think, it's not a bad. Not a bad place to be the Amazon of, of golf products. Yeah, and all, all of our all of our manufacturers, and this is without exception, are running into uh, are are having inventory issues, right? Like you've got you've got ships that are stuck that are in route here. You've got, <laughs> you've, got you've got more demand than the 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 they the they have seen, and so uh, it's a it's a pretty regular conversation. Again, not with one, it's with all of them about 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 it in, 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 which, which is a, which is a good problem to have it's a problem but you'd rather have not enough inventory and, and a lot of demand uh than, than 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 way too much inventory and, and a lack of demand uh there, there's a lot of good data in the market data out there that that suggests that 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 kind of eat on a weather adjusted basis demand is still as high as it ha- as it was uh during the during the height of the pandemic uh, Unbelievable. So, so it's uh, it, it's pretty exciting to see that. Uh, it remains to be seen how long how long it runs, uh, and if it continues to run when when uh, stadiums are at a hundred, you know, are at full capacity, restaurants are at full capacity, and everything else is 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 wide open. But all those up, other distractions come back, right? All the, right, right. Uh, but we'll you know. Once behavior changes, though, uh, if is what what the industry is hoping is that is that 
the good experiences that they had re-engaging or engaging for the first time playing golf uh, we'll, 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 we'll keep, we'll keep them a golfer, right? They'll, 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 they'll remain a golfer, uh, even with the other, the other alternatives out there. Well, as you, you talked about with, you know, the demand that you guys had, but having the restrictions of how many people it's supply chains on so many sides yeah. that are preventing fulfillment, um, except for digital, digital right. fulfillment, you know, is easy to do. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't digitally fulfill. Right, golf, hardware. Golf balls. We're we're working on that. That's I think I think uh, look 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 to that from us in, in the next uh, forty or fifty years. We're gonna you know teleport. You know, I'm just kidding. That was yeah, right. <laughs> and and you realize that your your son's bad, not going bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> but you realize that your son was probably not going to need a driver's license because by the time in the next thirteen fourteen years. Who's going to be driving a car except the car driving itself? Yep, that's true. He does like cars, though. I'm glad he likes cars. I'm oh, glad cars he... and balls. You must have a boy. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> he likes he likes di- dinosaurs and cars. Oh, that's fabulous! Congratulations. Well, anyway, this is this has been so much fun, Tom. I've really enjoyed speaking to you and and learning more about your business. And I think the idea of uh, the idea line saying golf smarter is a really good idea. Uh, I've got it written down. I'm, uh, in fact, take a picture of it. I, I will I'll <laughs> take a picture of it and send it over to you. And maybe, uh, it, it may be not, maybe I'll actually send it to you and not just virtually digitally send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been way too kind to me. I really appreciate. Thanks so much for your time. Fred, it's been an honor to be on your show. And, uh, and uh, hopefully we can play golf around sometime. As this is episode 790, the countdown is now officially on for episode 800, and it's going to be a celebration. Episode 800 is going to focus on our greatest lessons and takeaways from 15 and a half years of Golf Smarter instructors, authors, entrepreneurs, outrageous stories, and fascinating destinations. In addition to sharing what I've learned, I really want you to participate too. If you have a question for me, or you'd like to share your greatest takeaway from Golf Smarter, here's all you need to do. Call our Golf Smarter hotline at 415-761-1498 and record your best take. We'll download and include your message on episode 800. Deadline to submit your call is at the close of the 2021 U.S. Open, Sunday, June 20th. Again, the toll-free number to call is 415-761-1498. I'll continue to remind you as we get closer, but start thinking about it now, and when you're ready, call 415-761-1498. I'll leave the number in our show notes and a link at golfsmarter.com. Follow at Golf Smarter in social media and check out our video episode tease on Instagram. It's a good way to share and introduce Golf Smarter to your friends. Also, follow Golf Smarter TV on YouTube. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on what you'd like to hear on an upcoming interview, I'd love to hear from you. Just click on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com.